Hi, I'm Paul Battaglia, and this is section 3.5. Now coming out of sections 3.3 and 3.4, students now know how to use the first and the second derivative to analyze a function. And we're going to take it just one little step further. So the essential question we would like students to be able to answer at the end of section 3.5 is how do I analyze a function and then sketch its graph? So examples 1 through 8 are pretty traditional examples and they'll actually harken students back to some things that they've learned before this course. Things like domain and range, and intercepts and asymptotes are all things that students have covered and now they get to use those in tandem with the features that they see in a graph when they look at its first and its second derivative. Now it is a little bit unlikely that students would actually have to sketch a graph you know, from scratch by hand on the AP exam. However, examples 9 and 10 do a great job of showing you exactly what they should expect to encounter. So let's take a little deeper look at examples 9 and 10. In examples 9 and 10, students are often given things like the graph of a function's derivative or its second derivative and asked to make conclusions about the function itself. Now this naturally lends itself to some common mistakes which we're going to talk about in a second. But what students would be asked typically would be, given the graph of f prime, tell me where f is increasing or decreasing. Tell me where f is concave up or concave down. And these are all things that sometimes pose a little bit of a problem. And it's really because the graph is playing tricks on the student's eyes and mind and their connection. So my big emphasis to students is to do this. Justify first and look second. What that means is, I'll have my students look at the example I've given them, cover the graph with their hand, and then listen to the question I ask them. So let's, let's go through it. I'd like you guys to tell me where the function f is decreasing, and where is it increasing. But before you look for that, I want you to write down on your paper where exactly that would happen. Justify what you're looking for. So what I'm expecting students to do is this. I want them to write on their paper, f is increasing when f prime is greater than zero. f is decreasing when f prime is less than zero. Now they're not ready to write the actual intervals yet because remember, they have their hand on top of their graph. But when we're ready, I'll say, okay, if we have our justifications, let's look at the actual picture now. Once they do that, students have that aha moment and they say, oh, it's right here. But more importantly, what it does is it precludes them from trying to make an assumption based on what their eyes see instead of analytically thinking about what they're supposed to be looking for. So the common mistake we see is students saying, oh, well, f is increasing where I see this graph increasing. But they forget that the graph they're looking at isn't f. It's f prime. Or maybe it's f double prime. So going from that and talking about some other common mistakes, here are some things that you would like to watch out for. If students are looking to justify their answers and look second, as I indicated before, what they might also do is they might look at the graph real quick, take a sneak peek, and say, there's a maximum here, because I see that there's a maximum here. Again, what they're forgetting is they might not be looking at the graph of f. They're probably looking at the graph of f prime. So there's not a maximum there. Go back to our justifications. There's a maximum on a graph when f prime goes from positive values to negative values. And that's what we're looking for on this graph. All of this goes directly in line with addressing mathematical practice number 2e. Describe the relationships among different representations of functions and their derivatives. So here's how I might close the lesson to really give students an idea of if they know what they're really looking for. What I'll do is I'll create an overlay of three graphs on one coordinate plane. Now you can use really any three graphs you like. What you want to use is you want to use a function, its derivative, and its second derivative. Now the students know you're going to be giving them this, but you're not giving them any equations, just the picture. And you're going to ask them this. Can you tell me which one of these graphs is f? Which one is f prime? And which one is f double prime? Now you might have to color code the graphs or you might have to use dotted lines and solid lines, things of that nature. But if you do this and you get the right responses, it should give you confidence that all of those characteristics came into play and the students are really starting to put these concepts together. I hope you found these tips helpful. I'm sure you'll find much success in section 3.5.